Hey BBs, it's Plastic. How are y'all doing today? I hope we're all doing very, very, very well. Um, happy Pride Month to everybody. Um, I hope we're all having a really, really good day and I hope this Pride Month can hopefully be um, very prideful. I know it's definitely right now kind of in the, at least in the US and everything, it's definitely a really weird time for Pride and definitely a time for the queer community and the LGBT community. It's definitely a weird time for everyone. Um, there's a lot of things against us right now, and I think it's really, really upsetting and everything. Um, so today, I want to celebrate Pride and celebrate the queer community with you guys as I show you guys some of my favorite headcanons. None of these are ranked or anything. I just want to show off some of my favorite headcanons because, as we know, lots of doll media don't really represent queer people like they should. Um, a lot of it's hinted at, or um, it's a headcanon, or um, really shady. It's not the right time. Looking at Monster High so hard. I hate that. Um, G1 was horrible with their queer representation, and I want to just talk about that because it's awful how um, they're trying to play it off now. Like, girl, you were in the trenches a couple years ago. Um, so, but now it's time to hopefully be prideful and hopefully these companies and the corporations are making changes to support the queer community because for young kids to see queer people being represented in their doll media and the dolls in like the toy industry is so important and I think my eyes and I know a lot of people are going to say that it's grooming kids and everything and I don't want to get into that debate because I think it's so pointless and so stupid and just a circle and back and forth thing but um, I just know that there are so many queer people who would have died and loved to have seen queer people represent represented in their kids media to see that it's normal to see that you can have love no matter where you are and that you know you're never trapped inside a body and it's there's so many different things with it so I don't want to talk too much I just want to like talk about dolls because that's kind of what my channel's for because I can get very heated over this quickly but um so yeah the before, before I go into the head cannons and everything I, I want to show some like canon things that we have seen so far so actually I'm gonna start off with the first thing that's actually canon we have last year um, around this time, which I'm so happy to still have in my collection. And I actually have a funny story about waiting for the Bratz Pride dolls to go on sale. And I stayed up till midnight on Pride, um, May 31st last year, to buy these dolls. And these are some of my favorite dolls in my collection, to be honest with you guys. Like, I think it's kind of like true. But we have the Bratz Pride pack, which um, we know that Roxy and Nevra were a queer couple in like 2020. I think they made an Instagram post, but having them as physical dolls you know, out and loud and proud about their queerness is so beyond important. So we have um, Nevra, who is, I think, bisexual. Is she bisexual? I can't remember. I think she is, yeah, because she's a bisexual hair clips. And she has this poster, Queer and Unapologetic, which I, I'm going to give them credit because this is a Playline brand. These are adult collector dolls. So, like, I'm going to give them, like, the, the representation points and everything. And I, I'm happy that they're doing a step to this. And I hope to see it in Playline. Um, not for just adults, because I think it should be a wider variety that brats have queer characters. But it's, okay, I'm gonna get past that and just be positive for today's video. Is that I'm so happy that we have out and about queer people. And especially in the brats media, because I know brats is definitely a place for, um, people to just feel free and everything. So it's so nice that they kind of incorporated queer designs into some of our favorite characters. So Nevra is really, really cool. I love her, how out and loud she is. She's very, again, she's very bisexual. I don't know how I didn't realize that. Um, and this doll is really, really cool. Like, even, like, the pride flag on her shoes, representing the trans community and the black and brown community who is underrepresented in the LGBT community overall is really, really exciting to see. Again, black trans and black queer people overall is just very, very important important and empowering. So I'm happy that she included that detail on her shoes. These are gorgeous. We also have Roxy, who I had kidding to be trans. So she's a little boa and everything. I redressed her a little bit, but I think she's trans because of... This little like pride pin she has on her um skirt the skirt is so butt ugly but like the trans pin like i believe that she's transgender so um going into head cannons i don't care she's trans to me um and i love the little lesbian pin as well because like she's wearing all the pins that are hers so like it makes sense to me also like the lesbian hair like mama the world is gag and like the socks so gorgeous and as of right now literally may 31st, I think I'm filming this, 2023, the only other queer character that we really, really know of is Frankie Stein being non-binary in Monster High's Generation 3. Um, I used to do kind of canon, head canon. I don't Frankie to be non-binary across all media because that's what makes sense to me in my brain, but there are, you know, still using she, her pronouns for G1 Frankie releases, but I don't care, whatever. It's, like, I, I don't, like, she, her, she, they pronouns for G1 and G2 in my mind. 
um, are acceptable. Like, if you want to still use she, her, like, whatever. It's not, it's like, they use it, so, like, it's fine. Um, but I like Frankie being non-binary a lot. I think it only makes a lot of sense, and I'm super happy that they finally went in that direction with Frankie Stein in specific, because Frankie's a Franken Frankenstein, like, it's a, they're a person made of many different people and parts and everything, so I think it just makes a lot of sense that they are, are non-binary, not conforming to a sing single gender because they're not made of a single gender and like there's many different parts in them so it's really really cool to see that and I hope that one day we'd get a playline doll of Frankie and like a, a pride outfit or something showing that they are queer and everything I think that would be so beyond impactful and empowering to show that there are that to show kids that there are other options between just male and female and there's a wide variety of genders and I think it's really really cool that Frankie can represent that we also kind of have confirmation that um Cleo is dating Frankie soon. Um, don't really know her label yet, but um, they are in a sapphic relationship. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, so I am very happy about that, and I love these two together. And I'm excited to see where the Monster High story takes us. So for right now, these are the only two canon queer people <laughs> in doll media, which will give them that, okay? I'm going to give them that, and I'm just going to be happy and celebrate this. But moving on to my actual head cannons and some of the things that... I think are just fun to talk about and like theorize and you know what all that kind of stuff is some of my headcanon so I think getting into it I think I'm going to start with Monster High just because like that's kind of what I thought of I'm going to always headcanon Claudine as lesbian I think it just makes a lot of sense the headcanon is so big that I think it kind of morphed into something that like people like think is canon I will never ever ever give Monster High credit for Claudine being lesbian unless they outly say it even in generation three there's no signs of her being a lesbian which I think is kind of shady because this canon is so or this head canon is so big in the g1 monster high fandom that it feels kind of silly to not have that represented in g3 where you're supposed to be making it more diverse i think it would just make more sense for her to be at least be like bisexual or something queer um they're tr i think they're hinting at a relationship between her and deuce which if that ever happens i would be very upset to be honest with you guys um so keep that in my mind um but i do head canon g1 claudine and all claudines to be a lesbian and if they ever put her with deuce i can i will be screaming and i really really heavily ship claw venus to be honest with you guys um i also view claudine or venus to be a lesbian so like it just be a cute little ship i feel like they just make so much sense together like claudine is always wearing green and there's a lot of lines that kind of over overlap with these two characters like that in my mind it makes sense that they would be dating and everything um I don't think we'll ever see any G1 characters be confirmed to be queer because there's no media for it. There's not really many dolls coming out for G1, G1 that's like collector and it's whatever. And I'm fine with that. Like, you know, it is what it was. It wasn't the right time, apparently. And um, so, yeah, but I do like these. I like the idea of these two being together. And I hope to see Claudine be queer and Venus both be queer, queer in G3. And I think it would just be deserved and I'd be upset if it wasn't. But regardless, we also have Abby from Monster High's G1. And this is a character that I think is definitely trans and bisexual. Only because of the color palette, I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, definitely bisexual. Because, like, that's literally the bisexual flag. Like, are you kidding me? I also just think Abby would be, like... Like, she just makes so much sense to be a trans woman to me. I just think the pastel, the... The trans flag is literally all over her, like, red, blue, no, red, blue, pink, white, and blue. Like, it just makes so much sense. And this doll is so, like, empowering to me. I think it just, she's just so magical. I've always viewed Abby to be a very feminine character, to be honest with you guys. I think she's almost hyper-feminine. Like, she just exclude, excuse, excuse, exudes, shows off that energy, in my opinion. And there's been a lot of discourse about it with, like, if the headcanon of Abby being trans is okay. Like, I don't know why that's a, a fight, because, like, it's not harmful. People think that Abby's masculine, which I kind of, like, disagree with. I don't really feel like she's masculine at all. Um, so I just had canon her as a trans woman, and I just love that so much. I just really do love Abby. I think she's so cute and so sweet. But moving back on to Bratz, because I think that's kind of fair. I think that Chloe is also trans. Like, I just think it makes sense. And there's not really, like, a rhyme or reason. Like, I, like she doesn't have, like, a specific color palette like Abby. So, like, that wouldn't make sense. But, like, I just feel like she has, like, trans woman energy. Like, in, like, a really good way. And, like, when I say that, I'm not, like, meaning that as, like, an insult. And I don't want that to be, like, construed as that. But I just think she is so pretty. Like, it just makes so much sense in my brain. I think some of, like, the way that she just, like, is, is so transgender to me. I don't know. There's not much to say about it. I just think she's trans. Like... That's my headcanon. There we go. 
Uh, okay, I also have some other ones that like, are kind of funny. I have this as a ship, Dana and Megan. And I think if you guys are into the Bratz spaces and everything, you know that Megan and Dana are never characters that, you know, ever overlap in lines. They're never really drawn together in artwork. And any time that they're, like, they're seen together, it's very, like, hello. These characters are also both fighting to be the fifth member of the Bratz pack. So I think it would be really, really funny if these were, like, a really, like, if they were just, like, a little lesbian couple who, like bickers all the time and like they have like they have their beef but like at the end it's like enemies to lovers in my opinion and I think it's so funny to me to be honest like I just think it's it makes sense like it makes so much sense to me um and I always display them next to each other on displays and everything and they kiss so ooh. can y'all not watch that like that is so perverted um but I don't know like if y'all know like I feel like it's so hard to explain my headcanons but like these two just make sense in the in like the little head um and i don't know your thoughts and opinions also on this ship because like i think it's kind of more popular as of recently at least on doll twitter it is um but i've definitely shipped them for a minute and i like the idea of an enemies to lovers couple and i also like the idea of these dolls maybe i think megan is definitely bisexual and then dana is a lesbian and all be all discussion i also want to move though on to omg because I think that Cool Lev is definitely trans. I think a lot of people kind of view that headcanon to be kind of thing. He has his own pronouns. He on his little sweatshirt. He has love. Um, and I think he has a lot of, you know, very colorful um, colors. I don't always think that rainbow is equal being queer. Um, but I definitely think he is transgender. Because he's like literally wearing the trans colors all over his little sweatshirt. Um, I also just like that, like, the trans man in the OMG universe, because we don't really get that many men, so I think it'd be really cool for the men that were in the trans, um, that were in the OMG community, or that, in the OMG universe, were queer in some way, which is also why I think Tough Dude, or they're dating. They date, a little bit. I don't have any opinions on Tough Dude, I think he's just kind of, like, a gay man. Um, he's kind of a boring doll, but I think they, they're definitely together. And I, I display them together. They're holding hands together, and I like them together, so they're together. Um, I, what's the other boy that they have out? They have the rocker boy out. I hate that boy. He's not even anything. He's a straight man, and a bad one at that. Also, they're kind of following. I think, okay, before I say anything, because I don't have that many OMG dolls pulled out specifically for this video... But I want to say that all the OMG dolls in my collection are definitely queer. Every single one of them besides Rocker Boy, who I don't even claim to be a part of my collection. He's literally in a bin right now. I hate that doll. Um, but I, like, I can't get rid of him yet. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not ready for it. But um, all of the girls and all the guys, most of the guys, are queer in some way. Um, so I just want to say that before I get into the three dolls that I pulled out for this vid video sp specifically. Um, I kind of view Canelicious and alt girl to be in another one of those opposites attract relationships i love the idea and they do this so many times in the omg kind of universe where like the bff series all of the bff series dolls are dating so like i thought it'd be kind of redundant to like put them in their in this video because like it's gonna be the same point for all of them but i don't know if i've ever seen this headcanon that much i think it maybe a couple people have, have it but I love the idea of, like, Candy Licious being, like, the cute girlfriend who is, you know, making treats in, like, the kitchen, and she's all bubbly and sweet, and then you have Alt Girl who's, like, making the boba, and she's, like, kind of fiery, and she, like, is, like, an art. they're both artists, but this one has, like, a doll collection, and this one is, like, a punk, you know, rocker chick or whatever, and I like that idea for them, and I, they, they, they're always on display together, they're always gonna be together, so... I like this relationship, and I hope they never have boyfriends ever in the show, because I want this idea headcanon to stay in my mind forever, always, because I love them so much. It's kind of funny that I was just talking about the BFF series from OMG, because I brought out the only other OMG doll that I kind of specifically brought out was um, Trendsetter, I think her name was. Her and Skate, skate Park? Skate Boss? What's the... Skate... Skater Chick? Roller rink, <laughs> the one, the the orange hair Avril Lavigne doll. They're definitely dating, but this one in specific is trans. Tell me, she's don't, just a look at her. That's a trans woman. And she uses she they pronouns. Isn't she gorgeous? I just love this doll. I think she's wearing the trans flag. She's just very hyper feminine, which I really really love. And I just love this doll so much. She's so cool and she's so cutesy. Um, and I don't think there's again much to say. I just think she's trans like like we're good right like i think she just 
is so silly and she's one of those like 2000 chicks on like she has a little tiktok she definitely has a tiktok on like her little like flip phone and she just like posts like she goes to like tj maxx and like looks for like hello kitty stuff and i love her so much i think she's so cute see i love omg y'all i feel like omg is so underappreciated and i wish they would be more canon with their queer i th if they even have queer intentions but i think if they had more like I think I'm OMG dolls in specific don't really have much personalities, but if they did have personalities, I'd love to see them have queer personalities. And so I'm not really gonna like take points off of them because like they don't have a show. So like I mean they have a show oh my they do have a show. But like the show doesn't like do that much. Like they're kinda like there. So like I think it's easier for me to like give them a pass on like being less like character focused because like the dolls are mainly just for the dolls like they kind of just like give you the quality and I think they're more like a Barbie in a way where they you're supposed to give them your own personalities with them because like the names themselves like trendy girl what's her name oh my god I can't remember her name now I the trendsetter that's not a name like I think these dolls are more just like for the play purposes um so like I can't be that mad, ma that mad but I'd love to see a queer omg doll in specific, you know, I think Cool Love, though, is definitely the closest we're getting so far. The last kind of doll line that I have to talk about is Rainbow High. Rainbow High is a case that, um, they're kind of weird for this. So, I obviously have to talk about Bella and Jade. Um, I had to bring them over because we, we know about this ship. Um, funky lesbian, also funky lesbian. They've been teasing us with this relationship since 2020. Like, it has been three years of this relationship being literally nothing so yeah it's been a big headcanon I like a really big headcanon in the um rainbow high community um so it's a little bit ridiculous that we have not seen anything official from them they keep ta like um what is it called like teasing us with like little clip bits and like the sh actually we haven't seen the show since the wet november and the last time we even saw the show these dolls weren't even like a part of the really main plot so like but whatever, but, like, when they were airing the show and, like, they were, like, creating the show and, like, they were getting comments about Jella and they were just, like, kind of, like, brushing them off, I'm like, ooh, girl, ooh, girl. But, um, my headcanon is that they're they're dating. They met at Rainbow High, um, obviously, and they've been kind of irresistible, ir irresistible, irre 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 not separable. They've been not separable for a long time. And I think when Bella kind of got kicked off, I guess I have a spoiler alert if you're whatever. Um, when she got kicked off at the end of season one, I think she cried for so long. Jade was definitely distraught. She wrote letters. She sent care packages. Um, and yeah, I do. I think we did see like a little leak or something of like a roller skating pack with these two, maybe. I don't know if it's a fashion pack, but like green roller skates and like a pink roller skate so like maybe these will be canon in, in the next year who knows i'd love to see rainbow high kind of dive into that because again bratz has they're both by mga so like it would just kind of make sense for these these are also like some of like the biggest dolls right now i think rainbow high dolls are really really popular at least in my area i always see them flying off the shelves it would be so cool to have that representation with the brand um definitely something that was kind of lacking i in my opinion, like, Rainbow High started off really weird with the representation, so I think it would be just smart to add more, and I think these dolls just make so much sense, because, like, also, like, green and pink are so cute together. I don't know. This is just a big head cannon that I wanted to highlight in this video, because it's Pride Month, and the last one that I have is another big one, so it's, like, nothing new. Sabrina and Delilah, like, we all know this is a thing. They're gonna probably never give us this ship, but, um, it's nice to believe in it, um, I love the idea of Delilah being, like, a little sing singer-songwriter and Miss Sabrina being, like, the performer and, like, they work together as a team. Um, I also think they had a lot of chemistry through the show and the show doesn't really give the characters a lot of personality to begin with. So seeing them have this really, really cool chemistry on screen was super exciting. Um, so I just, I love it. I don't know what there's more to say. We kind of already seen a lot of the interactions with them through the show. Um, but again, I just love the color schemes together. Like, they're both kind of, like, more pastel-y. They just, like, look good together, and they're always gonna be displayed together on my shelf. Um, and I just love these dolls so much, and I hope maybe they'll be canon one day. Who knows? But for now, they live in my head rent-free, and they definitely have little date nights, and they write songs together. They go on picnics. They go to concerts. They love music, and they love their crafts, and they love each other. But overall, I think this video is just kind of fun and silly to make. And I definitely love sharing my headcanons because I have so many headcanons and I could probably go on for hours about it, especially with the OMG dolls. OMG dolls, every single one has an individual personality in my head. 
Um, but yeah, I just hope that one day we get more representation. And I think in the last, what, four years, we've gotten four, not four, since 2020, we've gotten a lot more representation. So we definitely are hopefully seeing more to come. And I'm just excited to see if these brands ever, you know, dive into it. And I'm happy that Bratz was kind of the first one to do it, to be honest, like, out and canonly do it. Um, besides like an Instagram story, like I think making a product with queer people and like showing like their pride was so original. And I think Bratz has always been the brand to reinvent the industry. So I'm hoping with the pride pack from last year, they're able to inspire other people. And I just love Bratz. Like they're so cool. That's like a really weird tangent to go on, but, um, Bratz is kind of killing it. Um, and I'm so excited to see them incorporate Nevra and Roxy in the future. And I hope to see them reoccur as another pr uh, pride pack or another, um, pack, and I know the Pride pack itself was a mess, to, like, not, like, a mess, but, like, it was definitely, like, a, a mixed bag of things, I know a lot of people had different opinions, um, so whether good or bad, I think it was definitely, besides how the designs were, I think the dolls were definitely a game changer and definitely a part of history forever, especially for just queer culture, um, and I hope to, again, see not Roxy and Evra and more Bratz characters come in the future being out and proud, and, um, I love Roxy and Evra. They're so cute. So, yeah, in the comments below, please let me know some of your favorite doll he queer headcanons. I'm really, really, really dying to know because I think there's so many... Everyone has their own opinions and everything, and I think it's so fun to, like, share it with each other. So I hope by me sharing it, you guys can also share yours. I think it's always fun to, again, have that conversation in the comments below. I'm really, really dying to know, and I'd love to chat it up with you guys. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys again for watching today's video. It was so much fun, and I hope you guys all have a very happy and safe and, you know, exciting Pride Month. And I um, hope to celebrate queer people every day of the year besides just in June. Uh, you know, we know that whole thing. So, yeah. Thank you guys again, though. So, so, so much for watching today's video. It was so much fun with you guys. And I cannot wait to catch y'all, though, in the next one. Hopefully very, very soon. I love you all so very much. Stay fierce. Stay flawless. And I love you guys very much. Bye. Bye, everybody.